all-new Dr. Phil. He's pushing 30. He was banned from prom. He was the age of the teacher. She still wears braces. I consider Josh a pedophile. Their love story. On your first date, he took you to a playground. He's barely legal. I had Joshua take me to get birth control because I heard that it prevents cancer. So you're taking it for cancer prevention. Check my forehead. Did somebody write stupid on there? at this happy couple. It appears to be a teen romance in full bloom. They went to prom together and are head over heels in love. But what if I told you this couple started hanging out when she was 16 and he was nearly 30? And now they're engaged. Her mother has made every attempt to stop this barely legal romance. I'm talking court petitions, missing person reports, an order of protection, and a two-week placement in a facility. But nothing has worked. And when mom took out a restraining order against this older man, well, he upped his game. He went to court, fought for, and won legal visitation of his barely legal fiance. Now, Cheyenne's mother, Jean, says their age difference isn't the only thing that's driving her crazy. In fact, she says that her daughter was the all-American girl, a cheerleader, a track star, a straight-A honor student. On the other hand, Josh, well, he's divorced, has been arrested for violent offenses, convicted of assault on a female, has just recently been taken off probation and has had supervised visitation with his child, who, by the way, is nearly a third the age of his fiance. So when did this love affair begin? Well, Cheyenne says she first met Josh when she was only seven years old. When Joshua and I met, I was seven years old. He would come over and play with my older brother, and I was the annoying little sister. We reconnected when I was 16, and we started hanging out, and we just clicked. We officially started dating when I turned 17. He started singing to me while we were on the playground. When I was taking classes, Josh would come visit me, so we kept it a secret. It was fun because we could actually be ourselves and not worry about what other people were saying. Joshua bought me a necklace, rings, and about 10 stuffed animals. I treasure all the gifts, and no one can touch them, so then it still smells like him. Joshua gave me a promise ring. Instead of a graduation party, we're thinking about doing a wedding. And we are eventually going to have one kid. We are in love, and nothing will ever keep us apart. Well, not if Cheyenne's mother has anything to do with it. She has the police on speed dial. When I go anywhere with Josh, the cops are called by my mother. She will file a missing persons report. My mother has been trying to put me in a detention home, and she threatens him she will leave a voicemail. I'm a I don't give a anymore. This is your mind now. End of message. She tells me that he's flirting, stalking us, texting other girls, and cheating on me. I feel like I'm Cinderella trying to be with Prince Charming, and my mother is trying to prevent it. I hate my mother. Yeah, well, your mother doesn't care if you hate her. She says it doesn't matter. She thinks that Josh is a pedophile who is preying on her baby girl. I don't want Josh to be with my daughter. I consider Josh a pedophile. Whenever I introduce Josh, I will say, this is my daughter Cheyenne, and this is her 28-year-old pedophile boyfriend. Josh was arrested for assault and battery for trying to drown his wife. 
I'm very disgusted and furious with their relationship. I contacted Child Protective Services, the local police department, counselors, mediators. She's called the cops a lot. It upsets me. It's frustrating. It's frustrating. Because then everyone gets in your business. I have called his probation officer over a hundred times. I have also tried to have Cheyenne arrested to keep her away from Josh. Nothing has seemed to help. Josh taunts me. He tells me that no matter what I say, he's going to see Cheyenne. The harder I fight, the more that Cheyenne and Josh fight to be together. Okay, this is a nightmare for you, right? Yes. What is it that has you so upset about this that you've got the police on speed dial that this has fractured your relationship with your daughter? He's dangerous. I feel that he's going to one day hurt Cheyenne. What do you think? Does it seem odd to you that a 28-year-old man is dating a high school student? At first it was a little weird. We were just friends and then we just, we liked each other. There are so many people that have age differences so we started looking around seeing like what the legal age was and how many people in our state had like age differences and we found out so many so at first it was weird yes but then we just got what used was, to it. What was weird about it to you? I guess <clears throat> just the fact that I was in high school so I like we couldn't go to prom together. But, but you, you sort of went to prom together right? Yes. He because came, you yeah. this is a picture of you guys, is that Dino? Yes. <laughs> okay. That's the two of you sitting on a dinosaur. Is that yes. outside of prom? Well, it was outside of a restaurant that we went to. He was banned from prom. He couldn't go in, but he could go. To and why pictures. couldn't he go in? Because he's older and he, the age difference, and it wasn't my prom. It was my friend's prom. Yeah, but he was the age of the teachers. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so he could chaperone, but not date. Yeah. I understand on your first date, he took you to a playground and yeah. sang to you. Yes. Um, I didn't know that one. Uh, we, we went with my... It's kind of ironic, isn't it? He, <laughs> he's dating a child, and he takes you to a playground to sing to you. Well, we, we actually went with my older brother, my older sister, and my little brother. What was um, he singing to you? Was it like, Mary it was, had a little lamb, or what? No. <laughs> No, he he actually sang the song I Want Crazy because he was talking to my sister about how good of a singer he was, so we just started singing. Okay. But uh, well, I'm just asking you, just in your sensibilities, does it seem odd, or your word, weird, that a 28-year-old man that's been married and has a child is dating a, a high school student? We love each other, and nothing's going to change that. Well, okay. Now, you filed seven missing persons reports on her? Seven or more, yes. What, and she wasn't really missing. Well... You know exactly where she was. You knew she I was knew, with him on a day. I knew she date. was with him every time, yes. But I did not know specifically <clears throat> where they were. I'm wondering if you're trying to get the police to parent your child. No. In my house, you tell me where you're going. That is one of our rules. And, and he's been on probation during a lot of this time. Yes. You've called his probation officer how many times? Too many to count. Like over a hundred? Probably over thousands. You, you've just called yes. and called and called. I okay. could call five, six times a day. Wow. We're going to hear from Josh. He's here. He insists there is nothing wrong with falling in love with a 17-year-old girl, especially one that he says is so beautiful and smart. Plus, something I noticed that I need to ask Cheyenne about. All of that when we come back. Cheyenne's mom can never keep us apart. Our love is meant to be. Jean is a psycho bitch. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. She records her son's tantrums. And posts them online. 
he doesn't behave that way when he's with you. Not at all. Her ex claims she's the reason. Amy can set Jaden off by poking at him. Their child is out of control. I didn't even know you were making money off these videos. I am going to do everything I can to help my son. How does that help him? That's Monday. Joshua take me to get birth control because I heard that it prevents cancer. There is no doubt in my mind they are sexually active. Cheyenne and I are not having sex. It's a love story that is actually illegal in 11 states, including the one we're in right now. But 17-year-old Cheyenne's nearly 30-year-old boyfriend, Josh, has clearly studied up on the consent laws in his state because he says his relationship with his young fiance is not only legal, but it's the best time of his life. Did I hear you say you went and got birth control for cancer control? Well, okay. So my doctor kept asking, because I'm heading off to college, if I wanted to go on birth control. And then she kept giving me paperwork and paperwork and paperwork. And I saw how it does prevent cancers. So, and cancer does run high in our family. So I was like, okay, I'll just do it. I'm going off to college, and I'm not going to be home anymore. So you're, you're taking it for cancer prevention? I'm just taking it because... You're, you're an honor student, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, check my forehead. Did somebody write stupid on there? <laughs> I don't know. I guess I got tired of my doctor I keep asking me and asking me and asking me. So I just... Well, we, by the way, we contacted a well-respected OBGYN who said, although birth control may actually decrease the risk of ovarian cancer, I quote, birth control is prescribed for two main reasons, contraception and cycle management, not for preventing cancer. Now, before we meet Josh, I want to hear what he thinks about Cheyenne. He says it's his soulmate. Cheyenne and I are very in love. We have a lot in common. We like hunting, fishing, going to the mall. We have the same favorite color. We just love tacos. Cheyenne is very beautiful, very smart, talented. She's an honor student, and I'm very proud of her. I would buy Cheyenne the world because she means so much to me. She's a great girl. In the state of New York, it's legal for us to date. I hate Jean. She is a psycho bitch. Jean makes up lies to try to break us up. Jean calls me a child molester. She calls me Cheyenne's boy toy. Cheyenne's mom even tried driving us off the road. One time, I had to call the police on Jean because she blocked me in a parking lot and was being held hostage. Jean is jealous of what we have. Cheyenne's mom can never keep us apart. Our love is meant to be. I will fight until the end. Okay, well, you know, we've been talking about Josh, and um, he's been listening to everything we've been talking about. So let's bring him out and hear what he has to say. Josh, come on out. Josh, how you doing? Dr. Phil. Um, so do you recognize from a purely objective, logical standpoint that it's odd for someone approaching 30 to be dating an adolescent? No, not really. That, that doesn't? No. Not even logically, that doesn't? In some parts, yes. Do you have a, do you have a child? I do. Uh, boy, I have girl? a five-year-old boy. Uh-huh. Five-year-old boy? Yes. Uh -huh. As a parent, do you have expectations of what you hope your child does? Do you, mean, do, you, do you hope that child grows up and has friends that are peers? Yes. And finds a, a, a mate that's a peer? Yes. Um, and do you worry at all that she is missing things in her life because you've already fast-forwarded through 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. You, you've, you've experienced all of those years doing the things that are typical for that age, and she is going to jump from 16, 17 to 27, 28 in being in a relationship with you. How about dating in college? Is she going to date in college? Um, probably not. No. If she wants to be with me, that's her decision. 
Uh -huh. You waited until the day she turned 17 to go public with this, right? Um, not fully. We before we actually got together, we don't really know the actual day we got together, so we made it November. for for November 3rd, right after her birthday. Mm -hmm. But we hung out. We were friends for the longest time. Why is it that you say you're in love with her? I mean, you said you both have the favorite color blue. We have, yeah, we have a lot in common. Like, we have a lot in common through everything. Your favorite color is blue. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, she likes to go fishing. I like to go fishing. You, you Do both things love, around. You both love tacos. Yes, yes of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... I don't know. Everything. So, look, I understand you not you not getting the the gravity of, of of what I'm saying and the absurdity of what you're saying, but you I would expect. Come on. Oh, yeah. Um, and and if you really care about her, uh, in a mature way, then you would do be doing everything you could to enhance her life, right? Exactly. And do you think there is any more important relationship than between a, a parent and a child? Do you think it's important for children to have a good relationship with their parents? Yes, I do. And in this situation, are you disrespecting her mother? I'm not trying to, no. You referred to her as psycho bitch. Because she's crazy. <laughs> Okay, even if that's true, and I'm not saying that that's true. Or, I'll admit it, I am. My point is, does that seem like mature behavior on your part? No, it doesn't. And behavior that supports her in having a relationship with her mother? No. How do you feel about her sister? Her sister? Mm -hmm. Do you refer to her sister as a slut skank? No, I do oh, not. Oh, no. No, oh, I do not. Yes, you do. I've never said that about you. You have to. I mean, be honest. Has he or not? There might have been one time after I've gotten called a whore, a skank, a slut, a bitch. Is mm -hmm. this okay, acceptable in your home for this kind of name calling to be thrown back and forth? No, we try not to, but, but you do. It, has, it has gotten worse. All right, we have to take a break. Jean says once word got out that Josh was officially dating her young daughter, his exes started coming out of the woodwork with stories that left mom more worried than ever. And next, one of Josh's ex shares the story of their short-lived affair. We'll be right back. Josh's ex-girlfriends have told me that he was abusive and controlling and would not be a good influence for my daughter. Another one told me she had a young child and that he was being looked into for touching her. My exes are liars. I am very honest and I have nothing to hide. Secret after school rendezvous, promise rings, and kissing selfies plastered on Instagram. Today, it's all about a teen romance. Doesn't sound all that strange until you find out that half of the couple is nearly 30. My, my Twitter followers are close to crashing my page uh, with tweets about Josh and Cheyenne right now. If you want to join the conversation, you can send me a tweet with the hashtag age gap. I'm curious if you think it's okay for a 28-year-old to date a 17-year-old girl. Uh, answer hashtag yes, Dr. Phil, or hashtag no, Dr. Phil. I'll have the results later in the show. Now, this isn't your first relationship, because we know you have a child, and you have visitation, but Nothing. it's supervised? It's not supervised, no. It is supervised. We're, we're, we're technically not supervised, but we're in the county building, yes. Okay, so you have to see your child in a county building. We both do, yes. So you can't take the child and go off to the park or go off? Not right now until... Okay, why, why is that? Um, I, they told me the reason why... I mean, I could have my kid, but because of I had a psyche eval done, uh, I'm not... Um, how can I say that? Smart enough or whatever to have a kid, supposedly, but... I have actually went to another um, therapist and they said that I could actually have my kid perfectly fine. So they said you weren't smart enough to have, I guess so, to yeah, have custody of a child? Sure. Or supposedly, or something like that. 
they basically because he brought his son over to our house and he was getting along with my little brother and everything and the mother of the child found out, freaked out, and went to CPS saying that he was taking him places that he shouldn't have. So they found out what your parenting practices included and said, this is not okay. You can see this child in a government building under yes. supervision. Yes. Okay. Are you concerned about his relationship history? I've been with him for nine months. I've gone places alone with him. I don't have a bruise or a mark on me. Well, let's talk about the pattern of past behavior, and you can clarify this, true, false, in between, somewhere. You got married when you were 21, and your ex was 17. No, my ex, we got married when my ex turned 18. She was 17 when you started dating, that's correct? Yes. Okay. Then she got pregnant a couple months after her 18th birthday. Were you accused of attempting to drown her? I was, she went to the police track because she met a carny and... Uh, she met what? She met a carny from the fair. We have a fair that comes to our town. Could we get to the part that involved water? <laughs> yes. Really? Did you try and drown your ex-wife? No. Were you charged? I was charged with it. With attempted drowning yes. of your ex-wife? Yes. In fact, were you charged with felony false imprisonment, first degree? Misdemeanor assault, third degree. Misdemeanor harassment, first degree. Yes. And you pled down and took a conviction for misdemeanor assault, third degree, and were put on three years probation. Correct. And supervised visitation of your son. Yes, for a little bit. Okay. Does that cause you any concern whatsoever? Being so I contacted the ex asking what actually happened, and she said none of it's true. She just wanted him away. Not at all. Three of your ex-girlfriends talked about you. They were all five to seven years younger than you. They all said you cheated on them. And they all said that you were abusive, hit, beat, pushed, no. whatever. So are, are they lying too? Um, I've never honestly cheated on them. You know, I found someone better. Broke up with them, but I never bit, hit them whatsoever. Those lying girls. Every one of them. So, Every one of them. I've never che I cheated on. I cheated on my ex-wife. So, but listen, the best because predictor, the best predictor of future behavior, yeah. is relevant past behavior. And what we have here is a history where he has pled guilty to being a a aggressive, whether we call it drowning or harassing or assaulting, or whatever words you want to put to it, uh, he was charged with that and pled guilty. Okay. Then three girlfriends have all said that he's a cheater and a beater. Okay. Um, that's one, two, three, four people that came before you in relationships with him that I'm seeing a real pattern here, a real what? cluster They're gonna... of reports. Okay, hold on. No, wait a minute. All I'm talking girlfriend. to her. No. Hold on. Does that, does that mean anything to you? It means nothing. Like, if I go to my ex, they're going to probably say, oh, yeah, she cheated on me. Audience, if that history would be of relevance to you, stand up. <laughs> Just a quick poll. <laughs> Okay, you can all have a seat. All right, we're going to take a break. Cheyenne's former best friend says Josh did something so creepy during a sleepover that she still can't stop thinking about it. What did he do when she was sleeping over with a friend? You're going to find out after the break. Before Cheyenne met Josh, she did competitive cheerleading, track and field, was a high honor student. Now she's rude and disrespectful. Cheyenne has called me psycho bitch, pushed her sister, hit her brother, kicked the cat across the room. I am at my wit's end. People are telling me that I'm a troubled kid now, but all I did was I grew up. So has she really grown up? Because what I was just asking her if she pays attention to history and she completely poo-poos it. But has Josh really changed Jean's cheerleading straight-A honor school student into someone she sadly admits she is thinking about disowning? Well, 
you know, I, you, we're talking about patterns here. And we talked to a friend uh, of yours. And how do you pronounce her name? Cheyenne. Cheyenne, also, just spelled differently. Reports that Josh is controlling and obsessive. Is that true? He, no. Okay. She says, she was spending the night at your house. Yeah. That Josh made you keep Skype on so he could watch you sleep during the night. Okay. First off, we aren't allowed to go anywhere together. So I would be on Skype with him, yes. I would have it on. But just, it, he didn't make me. I can always shut the lid. He's not at my house. How is he making me? He's not holding my hand saying, oh, no, don't do it. Like, I could have just shut the lid. I chose not to. The other Cheyenne is joining us now on the phone. Cheyenne, are you there? Yes, hi. So tell me about this Skype business. You're spending the night. You get up in the middle of the night. Um, well, yeah, uh, I was there, and she informed me that she sleeps. I don't know if they still do it, but she slept with Skype on because it made her feel better and him feel better that he could see her throughout the night. And knowing that that was up, it just freaked me out. It, it was just weird. Did you see it during the night? Well, yeah, it was up all night, and it, it was kind of freaky knowing that there was somebody able to see into the room while we were sleeping. I mean, I, I know that they were dating at that time, but it was still just a little weird for me. Uh, on the creep meter, does it just go like that <laughs> when he's watching you sleep at night? I mean, because my Not creep meter's watching. just going like that. I don't watch. We fall asleep. We're sitting there talking and we'll pass out. Not even knowing that we're still even on it. Just fall asleep. Not even pay attention. She said, And then it, then it ends by itself. To school. You shouldn't be watching her and I'm not, it's while not exactly she's that we sleeping. Are. She should be going to bed. <laughs> you go to bed. And go wake up. <laughs> I know, right? You are going to bed. Are, are y'all sexually active? Were you sexually active when you started dating at 16? No. How about now? No. No. I definitely don't believe that one. Why not? Because while we were out here, <clears throat> we slept in the same room. They were together. in the same room holy together. Crap. When... Yeah, holy crap. Yeah. 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 But still. Yeah. <laughs> you and I found something to agree on. Yeah. Um... That's... <laughs> Do you plan to, what, what are you saying to him? No. I'm sorry, I just, I just didn't hear what you were saying. <laughs> Nothing. But I'm sure it was something derisive, I'm just curious. Well, about okay, what. there's two beds. I mean, does he have a go-go gadget wiener that can just go, what? <laughs> like, seriously? That's what she says. <laughs> it's kind of uh, like, he right. was at my house one night. Yes. Her boyfriend sits there and says, oh, he sleeps with her. Does he have a go-go gadget <laughs> wiener really? that can go from one bed to another? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I believe I believe the boy could find his way over to the other twin bed. With him still sleeping on the other one, me on this one, him over there. Can he? His body still be over there, but his oh. over here. Oh. Seriously, there's no possible way. Sorry. I, we get accused. Of, <laughs> no, we're gonna go that far. <laughs> we get accused of it all the Did time. Did you tell Cheyenne that you were sexually active with him? No. Did you tell her you were gonna do that for Christmas? No. Cheyenne, what did she tell you? Uh, we're obviously yeah, actually, not friends anymore, so why would you yeah, we're not yeah, friends right. anymore. We're not friends we're not. anymore. Okay, could you let me talk, please? Oh, she did tell anything. me that for Christmas, she was thinking about giving him that as a Christmas present. No, I Okay. And I just, I'm not trying to be mean or anything to you, Shy. I love you, okay. and I just want, I just want you to realize that Josh just, He's not the best guy for you, and you could do so much better. You're gorgeous, and you have so much going for you. And I understand you when you're mad at me. I said bad things. You said mean things. But the way you're treating your mom, I just couldn't stand by and let you treat her like that. She's your mom, and she's done nothing but love you. This Cheyenne disagrees with that Cheyenne because she says that her mom has left her bruised and crying for help more times than she can remember. Is that true? Yes. 
uh, why is Jean so concerned about her daughter's well-being now if, in fact, she is the one that has been abusive with her in her earlier life? We'll talk about that after the break. My mom has never been a mother to me. When I was a child, she would push me and throw me around. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. Why is mom posting her son's tantrums online? When you were fighting him off, you were smiling at the camera. Smiling at the camera. Smiling at the camera. That's Monday. I hate my mom, so we fight all the time. My mother calls me a bitch, skank, a whore, a slut. I had to call the cops on my mom recently because my mother was trying to take the cell phone away. When I went to grab her shirt, her necklace broke. I left a scratch. I was charged with criminal mischief and child in danger. Well, Cheyenne says being treated horribly by her mom is nothing new. In fact, she claims her mother's constant beatings when she was younger left her dying to be anywhere other than home. When I think about my childhood, I feel scared. When I was a child, my mother would beat me. If I didn't listen, I would get hit. She would push me and throw me around. I was terrified. Even if I was crying a lot, she would not stop. I was on the top bunk, and my mom pulled me off the top bunk onto the floor. She screamed in my face until I cried. My mom enjoyed having me live in fear. I would go to school crying because of the abuse. She hit me with an extension cord. The next day when I went to school, the vice principal called CPS. My mom has never been a mother to me. What do you say about all that? There have been times where we have gotten into fights. There was, it is true with the extension cord, but it wasn't on purpose. She has called CPS on us a few times, and every time they have been unfounded. Uh, when I took her cell phone, she called the cops on me because I took her cell phone. Well, what kind of grade do you give yourself for a parent? What kind of parenting have you done here? Um, I've seen none. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. I've gone to parenting classes. I've gone to um, counseling. And, and where's your father in all of this? Her father is not around. He's back in town. And I'm he not is back him. in town. You have been seeing him. I saw him once. One time. And, and that every was time the he came to the house, he couldn't come. And you would tell me that he cared about his other kid than me. That's what because mother he did. tells that. He has two other kids. He, and he cares about them more than her. And, and you pointed that out to her because you said it's true. It, it is true. And for that reason, you pointed that out. Right. Because if he wanted a visitation with her, he would go back to court. Stop, ta stop, stop talking, please, for a minute. You know, I, um, I, I write a column in O Magazine every month for the last 12 years, and the one I just wrote was to make sure that when you make changes in your life that you're moving towards something you want rather than just away from something you don't want. You know, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we can do something, we can leave, we can make changes, not because it's what we wish we had, but because anything's got to be better than where we are. And I can understand how that might seem like a, a part of the thinking that you have at some level. I mean, I'm just wondering when you're going to encounter an adult in your life that doesn't behave like a child. And you're, you're talking about yeah, in the house there are names being called. Yeah. And then you say, yeah, well, I've had to, yeah, I've gotten upset and I've hit her and I've thrown things at her. And you're supposed to be the adult here. So, well, she doesn't have a relationship with her father, and I pointed out to her he likes his other kids more than he does you. He loves them more than he does you. And I said it because it's true. 
Well, yeah, yeah, okay. I, I, I heard well, she, that. But she's wanted to see him. And do I, you I hear what I am saying yes, here? Yes, I do say what you're saying. Because you're my view is you couldn't be chasing her more into his arms than if you had a stick running behind her down the street hurting her like cattle. I have been told that, um, too. Did, did you... Did you allow her to sleep over at boys' houses that she was dating when she was growing up? There was one. And for them to spend the night at your house? Yes, he did. So how many parenting classes did you take? Um, I think none. No. How many did you take? Surprise. It was one, and it was for six months. In those classes, did they say it was a good idea to let boys no. sleep over no. and her sleep over at boys houses no. did they say it was okay to call names and and degrading no. labels did they no. say it was okay to hit and beat and yell and scream and throw things no nope. i assume then, those were on the don't list right they were well in three months around. cheyenne turns 18 legally allowing her and josh to get married is that what's going to happen we'll talk about that when we come back In three months, you turn 18. Do you two intend to be married? Not that soon. Not that soon, no. You're, you're engaged. Yeah. I still have college. And you want to do that before you get married? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to talk to just you for a minute, okay? okay? I mean, forget, <laughs> forget these two are even here. Okay. I want to talk to you for a minute. You know, there comes a time in life where sometimes you have to give yourself what you wish you were getting from others. Yes. I mean, you wish you had a father in your life. Yes. That would say, hey, I'm proud of you. I got your back. I'm going to help you with college. I'm going to cheer for you when you do well in life and yes. answer questions for you. And you said that he's more of a father figure to you than anybody else in your life. I have said, um, yeah. And uh, a, a parent-child relationship overlay to a romantic <laughs> relationship is really a bad dynamic that doesn't work out. No, just listen to it. Just, just listen. There comes a point in, in, in your life, and I think you're at it, where you need to become very selfish. You need to become very self-focused. And you need to decide and recognize that choices that you're making now may have consequences for years and years to come. If you go down one path right now, you can get a college degree and become an independent professional that stands on your own two feet and doesn't require family or a man or anyone to help you make it in this world. There's another path you can go down where you wind up pregnant, having a child, having another child that the law will not allow him to be alone with for whatever reasons doesn't matter. But you know, you come to a fork in the road and, and you've got to decide that you care where you are five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now, and choices you're making now determine which road you're going to wind up on in the future. And I can tell you that while he may be blowing in your ear and telling you he loves you, he isn't behaving like it. Because if he really cared about you, he would be making different choices right now to help and support you. And you say, oh, we had these classes we went to and blah, 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 blah. You need to stop treating this child with disrespect. I know you love her and want the best for her. You need to start putting her interest ahead of your own and recognizing that she has a chance to, in Texas, we say, rise above your raisin. And... 
you're soon going to be 18 and soon going to be going off to college, and thank God that you are, because I think if you go off to college <laughs> and selfishly focus on who you are and use your brain and use your honor student background and the drive that has kept you focused academically, despite all of this chaos, you really have a chance. And I'm going to talk about what that chance should look like right after the break. <laughs> the chance that this is going to work um, is probably less than 5%. I'm just telling you the truth. Yeah, probably. And maybe, it, maybe it will, maybe it won't, but the chances are less than 5% just statistically. And that really doesn't have all that much to do with the age gap. It just has to do with the fact that he's got a series of yeah. failed relationships in the past. He's got a marriage that has failed. You do have an age gap. You've got some goals that you're going to want to focus on. And, but that's okay. You, you don't need him to be okay. He doesn't need you to be okay. It's, it's, that, that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. And that's why I'm telling you, I want you to decide, I'm going to do what gives me the best chance to have the life that I deserve. And, and I want you to feel like you deserve it. The age gap is, is, is an extra okay. problem. It is. We, we did a Twitter poll. Uh, on my Twitter page, I posed the question, if you think it's okay for a 28-year-old to date a 17-year-old girl, and the answers are... 13% uh, said yes, 87% said no. Uh, so most people seriously think this is an insurmountable obstacle for a variety of reasons. And I want you to be selfish for you. You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You deserve it. All right, I want to thank all of my guests today and a very special thanks to all of you on Twitter. Please keep it up, because you never know when I might read one of your tweets during the show. Uh, thanks for being here. I hope everybody hears what I'm saying. So long. Be selfish in your own behalf. Let her go to college. I drive so much. I drive so much.